Most golfers never get to experience the thrill of only having to use one golf club on a par three. But check out this 84 year old man from Jackson. Daniel Ferris is a miracle man in more than one way. Not only has he recently recovered from a debilitating brain hemorrhage, on last Thursday, Ferris knocked in his seventh hole in one, playing at Bent Creek with his son. My son said, did you see that? And I said, no, I didn't. He says, it went in the hole. I said, you got to be kidding. No, it's in the hole. Got over there and sure enough, there was a the ball. In 2008, Mr. Ferris was paralyzed on the right side of his body. But he told me with a lot of help from his family and friends, he was able to get back on that golf course playing the game that he loves. On June 24th, Mr. Ferris and his wife will celebrate their 64th anniversary. Southeast Missouri State University's nursing department is hosting a camp this week where girls from all over the country come to learn the art of nursing. 34 girls as far away as Texas and Georgia are in the heartland to be part of nursing camp at Southeast Hospital. They are learning from registered nurses and teachers to see if they may want to pursue a nursing career. Once we go through a program of teaching the kids how to do CPR, we will give them hands-on experience of saving a life. I came to nursing camp because I want to find out if I'm going to be interested in going into studying this field when I come older and I think it's going to give me a lot of learning. I'm going to learn a lot and it's a good experience. The students are following instructors in six different areas of the hospital. This is the eighth year for the camp. Now if you're new to the college scene, you may have heard of the dreaded phrase, the freshman 15. Now if you haven't, I am sure you will hear about it in the first couple months of your college career. Students on Southeast Missouri State University's campus told me that eating healthy when leaving home can be a hard thing to grasp. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, you know, you're, you don't have that set schedule that you do whenever you're living with your parents where, you know, you come home from school, you sit down and eat dinner and do homework. Um, you know, when you're in college, you kind of have your own schedule and you fit it in whenever you get time. Most cafeterias on college campuses are all you can eat and offer pretty much anything, which most of the time means rich in fats and carbohydrates. Recently, schools all over the country have made it a point to stock their cafeterias with more healthier foods. And that is exactly why Southeast has teamed up with Chartwell's Dining Service. When I spoke with Chartwell's executive chef, Michael Reitman, he told me that healthiness is the key to success. We do not serve anything that has trans fats. Um, our oils that we fry in are pure vegetable oils. There's no, or canola oils, there's no, no trans fats. So we, we're kind of ahead of the curve because we've been doing that for years. Reitman and Chartwells also think it is important to stay away from the frozen foods. Pre-prepared foods, I, and I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, you don't get to control the seasonings that go in them. Now college students, don't think the main culprit is the meal plan. Alcohol, sleep deprivation, and the lack of exercise also plays a huge factor. So if you have any questions about your eating habits, go visit your nutrition teacher on campus. Opening their doors in 1987, the Show Me Center has long been serving the Cape Girardeau community and beyond with entertainment. I spoke with a couple of key staff members to see how exactly they keep things running so smoothly. The staff at the Show Me Center rarely gets a rest. Even when you're headed home after experiencing a great event, they don't stop. They're still hard at work getting ready for that next event for you and your family to enjoy. This past weekend was the highly anticipated homecoming game for the Red Hawks, where they hosted the Governors of Austin P. The Red Hawks came off to a great start, leading 14-3 through the third quarter. But in the fourth and final quarter of the game, the Governors came from behind to score 21 points, making it a final score of 24-14. Southeast running back Henry Harris started the Red Hawks off with a 7 to nothing lead. At the 5 minute and 57 second mark in the third quarter, junior free safety Brian Blanford returned an interception 69 spectacular yards to put the Red Hawks on top 14 to 3. 
Behind 11 points in the fourth quarter, the Governors knew they had to turn things around. And unfortunately for the Red Hawks, this is exactly what they did. Austin Peay's Ryan White ran for a career high of 228 yards in the game and recorded a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Along with White, junior Terrence Holt ran for 100 yards and recorded two touchdowns, leading the Governors to victory. This past weekend, the Red Hawks traveled to Cookville, Tennessee to take on the Golden Eagles of Tennessee Tech. Curtis Hugie started the Red Hawks off strong with two field goals in the first quarter. The Golden Eagles came back with 21 unanswered points to lead themselves to victory with a score of 28 to 16. With Doug Spada injured, Curtis Hugie stepped up and scored nine out of the Red Hawks, 16 points on three out of four field goal attempts. With a slow start to the first quarter, Dante Gay turned things around for the Golden Eagles and ran 37 yards for a touchdown to put his team on top, seven to six. On the Red Hawks' next play, Matt Scheibel threw an interception pass at the Red Hawk 38. Seven plays later, Gay scored his second touchdown of the game. With eight minutes and 23 seconds left in the second quarter, Tremaine Hudson ran seven yards, adding six points onto the Golden Eagles score. Tennessee Tech wasn't done just yet. Senior running back Cedric Wilkerson ran one yard, giving the Golden Eagles a 28-9 lead. The one touchdown for the Red Hawks came two minutes later in the fourth quarter. Wide receiver Cedric Cox caught his first career touchdown. This is one Cox will never forget. This loss puts the Red Hawks at 1-6 for the season. With four games left, they hope to carve their way out of a six-game losing streak on Halloween Day. This upcoming weekend, Coach Samuel and his team head to Richmond, Kentucky to take on Eastern Kentucky for their last and final road game of the season. Drew Federko, Red Hawks TV. Well, hello everybody and welcome to this special edition of Public Forum. My name is Drew Federko and beside me sits Neil E. Boyd. Oh. Neil, it's a very pleasure to have you Thank on the show. Thank you so much. It's fun to be here. It's good to be back here. And you are the winner of the 2008 America's Got Talent. Yes, That's sir. That's got to feel good. Uh, it's, it's felt, you know, it's been, a, it's been a very, very blessed couple of years. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you how much life has just changed, and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. Well, <laughs> let me try to put you back in those shoes. You're standing up on that stage. It's you. Please and don't. Your please don't. No, I'm kidding. And Jerry Springer comes up and says, and I quote, the winner of a million dollars, the headline show in Vegas, and a title of the best new American act. What the heck are you feeling? I think I said it best on the show. Well, speaking about emotion, your mother, yeah. your family in general, you, every YouTube video, everything that I see, everything is, I love my mother. Mm -hmm. I love Sykeston, I love Missouri. Talk about your mother. She is, how, why is she such an inspiration to you? Well, she, this is a woman who is, she went through so much. Hello everybody and welcome to this special edition of Public Forum. My name is Drew Federico and on the show today we have two special guests. And our first guest is Mr. Dan Woods of KRCU radio station here in Cape Girardeau. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Now let's backtrack a little bit and talk about your life per se. How did you get into radio and I understand you started here at SEMO? Absolutely. Now this may not be as much of interest. Uh, to now if we look back and we go back to 1976 if I'm correct is that when is the, was the base start year That's the for very beginning. KRCU. Right. Can you tell us about that history? You actually started in the Growl building which we are in right now. Absolutely. Uh, and the station went on in March of 19 we offer today. Now you are at the 20 year mark like you said. Right. And we got around three minutes left, so let's just talk about that, and that is the juicy stuff. 20 years, you got to feel good, right? 20 years is a huge milestone, and so. Now this Cape Splash, huge piece of property right off of King's Highway, exciting. 
How do you guys get that piece of property? I mean, I understand that you guys work with the city, but that that's a nice piece of property in, in a prime spot in Cape Girardeau. You're right, and that's part of it. Thank well, you thank so you. much for joining us, and good luck, because you know I'll be out there with you. Okay, <laughs> Drew, maybe we can get you to be the first one down the slide. Absolutely, please, I would love that, I would love that. Well, everybody, this concludes our show for Public Forum. I'm Drew Federico, and I hope to see you out by that pool this summer.